So this is our card in session eight. Um, and I was about, I was thinking to talk about pruning, both pruning and DIY products, especially fertilizers. But I realized that pruning pruning is quite a lot of information. So today I'm going to talk only about pruning, and then in the next session we talk we can talk about more about products, because yeah, you will see it, it is more complicated than it looks like, and it's like it's something very daunting. Always cutting a plant and learning how to cut the plant. It's something that, yeah, people consider it very complicated. So I think it's worth this, like spending some time talking about it. And then on, on the end, probably you will have a ton of questions. So we can talk with like dedicated enough time. So pruning by definition is cutting a part of a plant. So you can see in the picture that this person is just by hand without uh, secretors or scissors or anything, is just cutting a, a little piece. So this is the definition of pruning. Now it can be whatever, it can be flowers, it can be a leaf, it can be a stem, it can be different things. Yeah, so, so ah, sorry, so it is. You can see in, in the left one that is cutting a sucker of a tomato, that we will see later on what it is. And in the left, this person is cutting a rose the stem of a rose. So this is also considered pruning. Pruning is also cutting leaves of, uh, also cutting uh, branches of a tree. All of this is under the same name. Now, the question is, to prune or not to prune? Um, there is no a perfect recipe for this. We are going to see some examples, but you will see, I, I, will, I will talk in, in each case that is not that easy. There is not only one recipe. In many cases, you prune according to what you need. For instance, if you have a limited space, so there is not only one way of doing it. Um, yeah. Some of the most common reasons to do this is to get fruit and in some cases more fruit. So some plants, they say that if you don't prune they don't produce uh, female flowers, for instance. So if you have only male flowers, the male flowers don't produce any fruit. So you need to prune them in order to get to get fruits. Uh, in other cases, if you cut, cut them in a if you prune them in a certain way, you get more fruit. You get also stronger central stems if you prune your plants. But I wanted to put here two examples. The example on the left, if you see, the tomato has four stems. Do you see that? So in this case, this person didn't want to have one strong central stem, but it favored the plant to have four stems. Whereas in the tomato on the right, it has only one stem. So yes, you can prune to get a stronger central stems, but as I said before, it depends on your aims. This person in the left wanted to have a tomato like that, so it gave that shape. Yeah, exactly. So it's to, to save the plant. So now that it is um, now that it is uh, bigger, do you see that the stem in the central in the, cent the, the central stem has been cut? So it cut there and it allowed for suckers to grow. So it gave the shape in that way thanks to pruning. And then probably it has been that yeah, you can see that it has been pruning stems and leaves along those. So it has given the shape in that way. Uh, pruning is also useful to make the fruit ripe. We will talk later on about the case of the tomatoes, but for instance, in the in the end of the season, or uh, when the cold is coming or the first frost is coming, many people, uh, including myself, we uh, stop the plant from growing more uh, leaves and stem. Because in that way, it starts to put more energy on the on the tomatoes or on the fruits that are green. So you will see, in this case, that you have green tomatoes. Imagine that this is October and you want the tomatoes to get ripened to eat them before it starts to rain a lot, to be fro to have frost and everything. So you will prune the plant so it, the, the tomatoes and the fruits finish ripening. And that's it. It's the end of the plant. And then one thing that you may say to me, okay, we have peppers or chilies or whatever, or tomatoes, we have pruned them and 
still they are very tiny or I got very few. So you need to understand that pruning is just one part of gardening. Imagine that you have a tomato or a pepper or a chili or whatever that is in a container that is very small and with very, fru very few nutrients. Even if you have a perfect pruning technique, because that plant doesn't have enough nutrients to produce the fruits, it, it simply is not going to work. So yeah, take into consideration, pruning is only one thing on the long list that, uh, of things that a plant needs to, to successfully produce fruits. But it's not the only one. This is very important. I wanted to put this picture because it impressed me a lot. So this uh, this plant, I think it's in Disneyland or something like this. Um, you see, like thanks to pruning, this tomato is it has one stem, and it has given they have given this incredible shape. Can you see that? So these are other things that you can do thanks to pruning. But of course, this plant wouldn't be like that if it is unhealthy or doesn't have enough nutrients. But I, uh, I just wanted to give you an example of the things that you can do with a, with a pruning technique, with different pruning techniques. I've got hope for my tomatoes now. <laughs> yeah, it's very impressive, isn't it? So, good practice on pruning. It's good to do it on the sunny days and avoiding wet days. Um, I would like you to open the, uh, the microphone and tell me why do you think that, that that's it? Why sunny days and not wet days? Would, would the heat heal better maybe on the sunny days? Uh, yeah, and you will also avoid contamination. Do you remember that we were talking about fungi and that uh, fungi, uh, like how to say, spreads with the rain and all of this? So imagine that you have an open wound, wound and you have continuously water falling over you. Water that has been falling over other leaves. So the chances of getting contaminate, contaminated with something is much higher if it's a sunny, hot day. Much, 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 much uh, higher. So that's why we will try to select the sunny, uh, warm days to pruning. To pruning. The techniques, the technique to, to prune, you can pinch, pinch is just with the fingers, you snap the whatever you want to, to cut, or you cut with scissors or secretaries. And what is important is that it is clean. So you will see with the tomatoes when you do it, but the tomatoes have a skin that is quite tender, so you can easily, if you don't pinch properly and completely the, the sucker that you want to remove, if you leave a little bit of a string and then you pull, you can like remove the skin of the stem of the tomato and that is very bad for the tomato, obviously. So you need to be very, you need to snap and cut in a very clean way to avoid damaging the, the mother plant. And then if you are using secretors or, or scissors, it's a very good practice to clean them with a bit of alcohol. So when you are cleaning uh, plants and you don't know if they are infected or not, you are not spreading the infection or the disease to, to other plants. So you cut one plant, you clean your scissors or your secretors, and then you move to another plant. What plants we normally prune? Indeterminate tomatoes. Do you remember that there were two types of tomatoes? So we only prune the indeterminate ones. Later on, when we talk about the tomatoes, I will explain more. Aubergines, peppers, chilies, cucumbers, melons, squash, courgette, and herbs. But this is only some of them that we have been we have been talking about them more often in this in this, uh, this course for beginners. But there are so many roses, citrus trees, all type of trees, like all many 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 plants. Uh, benefit from pruning. So, thing that we are going to only talk about the most common ones, the ones that we we have uh, more commonly on our garden. But you can do this with so many, so many, so many. And then we are going to start with our our list of the most common plants. First, we have the cuyet. I'm going to start from the most simple to the most the most complicated. I, I hope I don't I don't I don't lose you. If you have any question, you can you can just ask. So the cuyet the cuyet has a central stem, 
as you can see here, sometimes instead of one central stem, it can have a, a couple. This may happen. And then these, these um, circles that you see are these, the, the stem of the leaves that are cut. And these ones are cujets that have been cut. So it grows from the, from the, from the apex, from the uh, upper part. In this case, we prune the plant as it grows. So you see there is nothing here to improve aeration. I don't know if you remember when we were talking about the diseases, courgette is very prone to have a, a powdery mildew that is a, fu a fungal infection. So by promoting aeration between the leaves, you, you, you um, kind of avoid that a little bit. It can happen as well, but you kind of avoid that. And the old leaves of the courgette are normally more prone to all kind of infection, infections and diseases. So in this case, this is better. Uh, you avoid rotting as well, because as, as well, the, if you leave an old courgette or if you leave a rotting uh, leaf, chances are like, it's like gangrena, the rotting can pass into the stem, so it's better to cut it before that happens. Yeah, you also avoid mold and other diseases. And one thing, one very important thing to keep into consideration is that it's, it's not good to trim more than 70% um, of the leaves. So, yeah, sorry, this is wrong. You need to leave at least 30% of the leaves in the plant, if you understand what I mean. So if 100% will be all the leaves, you need to leave at least 30%. Yeah, because the, the plant needs the leaf to keep growing and producing uh, food for the plant. So at least that. Now we move to pepper and chilies. The, the, both plants are very similar, so I put them together, but yeah, you will see. Uh, in this case, pruning is to make the plant stronger, to, to make the main stem stronger. You get more fruiting because um, you are removing, how to say, you are focusing the energy of the plant or making, or making more fruit instead of making more leaves. And yeah, you get the, st the stems that are left are stronger. Now you can see in this picture that in the axile of the leaves, there are some green little buds. If you left leave that to grow, you will get um, leaves, another stem, leaves and fruit there. So these are the parts that we remove. So, that so you will have um, a strong central stems instead of a lot of little stems going in all directions. So this is the, the, the pepper or the chili plant. So we what we will do is removing these little buds here and we will keep the central stem. Some people remove the first flower here in the when when the central stem it starts to divide in three, and this is very common on all the peppers and chilies that the central stem divides in three. Here there is one, the first flower with the, that will give the first fruit. Some people remove this one. I don't remove it, but some people do. So I just wanted to mention. Ah, oh, sorry. So you will have removed the, the first buds here. And then the plant keeps growing. You have the first division in three. You can remove here the plant or not. And then you will have more divisions. And then you will have uh, flowers and fruits. So this is how the structure of the pepper or the chili plant will look like. And then normally they have the flowers and the, and the fruits in these intersections. Now, if you watch videos in YouTube about how other people do this, you can find so many, so many variations, so many. So in this case, this guy, what he did is cut the main stem from the baby base and it looks so drastic. It looks very, very, very drastic because this guy was um, having the chilies and the peppers at home and it was very cold outside. 
So it was very too, too soon in the season to transplant them outside. And also, so, so, so he was trying to delay the flowering of the plant. So by cutting the main stem, he was trying to make these buds to grow. And yeah, so that will have, that will delay the growth of the plant and the, therefore the flowering and the fruiting. And also this is useful as well if you want to make your plant bushy. Because then instead of one central stem, we are going to have one, one, so three, and this one probably is on the other side as well, so four. Instead of one central stem, then you are going to have four stems. So it's very good to, if you want to make the plant bushy. So as you can see, you can prune um, in a way, in one way or another, depending on the shape that you want to give to your plant. So in this case, this plant will have delayed flowering and fruiting. It may be, if the season is long enough, that it gives you more fruit than if you will have left the central stem. But it may be that the fruits are a little bit smaller because it's producing more at the same time. It's more um, energy consuming for the plant. So maybe this will be good for chilies that are very small, for instance, if you want to do like a bushy chili plant. I hope that you understand how, start to understand a little bit how this works. Now we move to aubergine. Um, An aubergine is the same. If you prune, you have a strong, stronger plant, you have more fruits, and the stems that you are not cutting are stronger. In the case of the aubergine, for instance, if you compare it with the pepper, we leave, uh, you can leave one, but it's okay to leave two central stems. As you can see in the picture, we have, you have left two. So this plant, it has grown one, 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 one. And then at some point, you don't remove the bud that, starts, that, that is here. And that bud starts to grow in one plant, in one stem, sorry. And then you have the main stem growing as well. So this is what it will happen. And then after you have left this branch to grow, then you will remove all the little buds that grow in the plant. So the plant focus on only these two stems. And here you can see the, the flowers. Here is the fruit and then the fruit starts to grow from bottom to, to above. From bottom to up. And herbs. Um, you can do pruning um, with herbs that mo have more than two years of life. If one herb is, is meant to um, get born, <laughs> to germinate, and die in the same season, it's a little bit tricky to give shape to that plant because yeah, it, it, it's only going to have some months of life. But if you have basil, rosemary, thyme, that can live... Uh, some like more, more than a year uh, basically it depends a little bit but so you can play a little bit more with the shape and by pruning herbs you can have more branches and you can avoid flowering because in herbs we are interested in the leaves so yeah for instance this uh, rosemary you can see in the picture this is the main stem and then here, you can see that there is a little bud here, a there, here as well. Do you see this? So if you leave this to grow, you will have a branch coming out, out of them. Like it has happened in this case, in this branch that is in the background, you have the main branch here, and then you have one coming there and another coming there. So these ones at the beginning were like this. So if you cut a main branch, what you are doing, instead of promoting this branch growing taller, you are promoting the growth of the branch that are growing on the sides. So in this case, you can um, yeah, modify the, the shape of the rosemary to give more branches and therefore more leaves. In the case of basil, it is the same. Instead of one central stem, you can cut the central stem and you have it, uh, you have like three stems instead of one and in this way you are also delaying the flower especially in, in the basil if it is if it is warm basil go very quick to flower so if you do this you are promoting them 
to grow more uh, more stems and more leaves. And, the th and with thyme is the same, with sage is the same, with many herbs. Now we start to complicate the, the business a little bit. This is melon. Now, if you search for it, it is cantaloupe melon uh, precisely because it's the one the seeds that I have and I think I have sent to a couple of you. They asked me for you asked me for this, so because it can grow in smaller spaces than other other melons, so that's why. It is a little bit more complicated. So if you check in, in YouTube or in internet and things like this, there are so many ways, so many ways they recommend you to do this in such a different ways. So I'm going to tell you one, but it then it's up to you. Um, some people say that if you if you stop the main stem of the melon to grow, you are going to have more female flowers because female flowers come in the secondary stems more than in the main stem. So this is one of the reasons to, to promote secondary branches in the melon. And, uh, and also to have sweeter fruits if you prune, because then you are um, telling the plant where to, where to put energy. Same that in the, in the rest of the cases. So how they say to prune, to prune melon? First, stop the leading stem at about five to six feet high. So when this main stem grows, 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 and it reaches five or six foot, then you, you will pinch here. You will cut here. So the main stem is going to stop growing. Then remove the axillary suckers until the ninth leaf. So from the main stem, you are going to have leaves coming. So these little buds, if you don't cut them, they will give you a new stem from here. So we will, what we will do is remove them. We will remove all of this. So you will have a main stem with leaves only, but you wouldn't have any branches coming from the beginning of the stem. Then pinch the lateral stems after five leaves. Uh, so you have the main stem after you have uh, let nine leaves to come, then you allow a secondary stem to come out. And then after you have five leaves, one, two, three, four, five, then you pinch the stem here. So you will have lateral stems with flowers and melons in all these lateral stems until here. It is a bit complicated. <laughs> and this, um, how to say, when you have several plants growing together, it can be a bit messy. So the best is going to the base and understanding which one is the main stem, which are the lateral stems, and then do it. And it is better to, how to say, to keep an eye on these type of things from the very beginning, rather than leaving it to grow two, three months and then saying, ah, I'm going to prune my melon. Then it's going to be much more difficult to detect this is structure. It's much better to keep an eye on it as it grows. I hope it is clear. And as I said, this is only one of the many ways that they recommend to do this. Cucumber. Um, again, in this case, cucumbers, if you prune them, you are supposed to get more fruit. This depends a little bit on the variety. So there are um, some types of cucumbers that have female and male flowers and you need to remove the male flowers because they are self-pollinated like they can grow without the pollen from the male flower and if you leave the male flowers they become bittern so you have to check that when you buy the cucumber and you buy and you select a variety you need to read what you need to prune in that specific case now, the pruning of the cucumbers depends a little bit in your space. Imagine that you are having your cucumber in the greenhouse. In that case, cucumbers can grow very quickly and very, very high. Or, yeah, very, very high if you are trailing them to go, to go up. So, in that case, you are going to limit, you are going to use pruning to limit the growth of your cucumber. So, 
how you prune it is going to depend on how much space you have. And then again, pruning can help you to to ripe the cucumber, to, to ripe the, the fruits. So if you are getting close to the end of the season, you can limit the growth of the stems and the leaves. So they put the energy in ripening the cucumbers that are left. And this is a female flower. You can see this will be a cucumber. The male's flowers sit here, so they don't have this part. So how you can prune cucumbers? But as, as I said, this depends on your space and what do you want to do. But in general, you can limit the branches that don't have fruit. So if you have a lateral branch, uh, you can see that it has um, seven, seven, um, seven leaves. And there is no, you cannot see female flowers with a cucumber. You can just cut that branch. You can you pinch the main stem when it has four or five leaves. So the little plant, when it's growing, you count one, two, three, four, five leaves, and then you pinch it. And you are going to have the buds in the axils growing into secondary stems. And then if when these secondary stems grow, if you have a secondary stem without fruit, at the seventh leaf, you cut it. You don't allow it to grow. So this is one, one way of pruning cucumbers. One of the 1,000th way. Tomatoes. First and most important thing, remember, we have indeterminate tomatoes and we have determined tomatoes. So determined tomatoes, by definition, have a limited growth. They are bushy, they grow a little bit and that's it. They are um, very suitable for uh, patios or for uh, containers, for window sills. So in the case of the terminate tomato, you don't need to cut anything. You don't need to pr prune anything. If you do that, you are limiting the growth and you are not going to get tomatoes probably. If you start to remove the suckers and all of this, you are not going to have enough tomatoes. So we forget about Doing, doing pruning in determine, determinate tomatoes. We're going to focus on indeterminate tomatoes. This one has unlimited growth. So as you can see, you have the main stem, and this will be growing, 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 and then you sorry are going to... to... Sorry to interrupt, but how do you know which variety is the indeterminate tomato? When you... it says so on the pack. When yeah, them. when you buy it. Yeah, exactly. And they're not like... You know the little sweet little ones. You could have determinate and determinate, or yeah, the very tiny little yeah. ones. I have a cherry in the garden that grows like to a monster. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah, and it it has very very sweet and small cherries, but it grows like anything, it's super vigorous. So yeah, you can have you can have any kind of uh, well, not any kind. I guess that there is some some kind of limitation, but yeah. I, I guess that the determinate tomatoes tend to be more cherry, but you can be you can have indeterminate tomatoes in cherry. O sea, cherry in indeterminate is that the tomatoes. One you gave? Sorry? Is that the one you gave us indeterminate? Yeah, all the varieties that I give to all everyone was were, were indeterminate. Because I have a garden and I can grow without any limitation, so yeah. So yeah, you will see that if you feed them well, they are going to grow quite a lot. That's why we need to prune them, that we will see now. But yeah, so you have to check this when you buy them. If you, if you, are many, if you want to buy from a shop, you have to check this. So we are going to talk about indeterminate tomatoes now. Pruning is useful to get more and sweet fruits and to have a plant that is manageable. <laughs> Because you will see, especially uh, Martin, that has uh, the fruit, the plants outside, that they, tomato is like, uh, how to say, like a, a plant that has such an energy and a, like a willingness to live. <laughs> you will, you will see, they are incredible. They, are, they just want to grow, grow, grow and expand and expand and expand. It's incredible. So a little bit of jargon first. This is a, a branch of a tomato. We have the main stem in the center, 
Then we have leaves. All of this is a leaf. So this is all of this is the leaf. In the where the main stem joins the leaf, this is called axile. And in the axiles, you have suckers growing. Sucker is like a um, how to say it? it's like the lateral branches that we were talking all the time. But you call them sucker because they kind of suck the energy away from the plant, so that's why they are called they are called suckers. So in every axile for tomatoes, how to say um, every week you can have a sucker. Even if you cut it, the next week they can come again. That is such the energy of the tomato, of the tomatoes. Um, so in every exa axile you can have a sucker growing. If you leave this for too long, it grows a it grows in a tomato plant from here. So you have the main stem, and then you have another tomato plant here. So this is why if you neglect your tomato plants for too long, it's like in the melons and in the cucumbers and in everything. It starts to get a little bit complicated to know which is the main stem, which is the lateral stem. So it's better to be on top of this. And then from the main stem, you can also have clusters of flowers. And every flower will be a tomato. So this is how you have uh, like a little vine of tomatoes. And then at the top of the tomato plant, of the main stem, you have the growing tip. So basically, if you cut this, the plant will stop growing vertically. But then the suckers are like a small replica of this. So the sucker will have a growing tip as well. Do you understand? It's like if you have another tomato plant coming from the axile. So the sucker will have the, the clusters of flowers, it will have the growing tip, everything. And it will give you tomatoes if you let them grow. I hope, I hope this is clear. Now, ways of pruning tomatoes. This is a sucker. So this is the main stem, this is the leaf, and this is the axile, and this is where the sucker is coming. If you see, there is kind of a little bit of a scar here, probably because this axile has had another sucker before, and it just came back again. So the most simple way of pruning is just snipping this. With you can these stems are soft. So you can do it by just squeezing them and, and with, the, with the fingers, but you can do with the secretaries, clean secretaries if you want. And the, sim the most simple way of pruning is removing the whole sucker. As you can see here, you remove the whole of it. Now, yesterday, I saw another technique that was very interesting that is called Missouri pruning. <laughs> and in this case, you let the sucker grow a little bit until it has two leaves, and then you remove like the top, the growing tip. So this sucker is not going to continue growing, but it gave two leaves, and this is going to be useful for the plant to grow, to produce energy. So this is another way. I guess that by doing this, you may stop for some time other suckers to grow in the axile. So I don't know. It, it sounded interesting to me. Maybe I, I try it in some plants to see how it works. And then, yes, as I have said, that is the basic pruning technique, but then you can do whatever you want. Imagine that you want to do this. In this case, we have allowed four suckers to grow, and then we cut the main stem. So this is how they have grown this plant. In the case of the right, there is only one stem. So they have been removing all the suckers from the base. And then here, they have allowed some of them to grow. So you have one branch, one became one branch, another one became another branch. And I think this one is the main stem. So there are different and ways. Alex, yeah. Just a quick one. And if you leave them in the stem, but then also leave like a couple of suckers and cut the others, would that be okay? Yeah, but then look at this one in the left. This is very heavy. So if you don't support this well, this is going to break. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the point of leaving the main stem to grow very long and then branches on top is that, how to say, it, this is like kind of easier to manage because you just, yeah, you can put them, for instance, here in this kind of structure and this is holding itself, but this, it goes all over the place. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and then these ones, these ones continue growing on top. So they, they become more and more heavy. So I suppose eventually you you end up you need to cut the 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 tip the top the top of these the ones top of white carries on non stop yeah. yeah so you can do that but yeah it it depends how you want to grow your tomatoes if you if you think that you are going to be very very able to to create this and hold the stems very well you can this is easier me in my case I do. Because I have I have tried all kind of things in my in my greenhouse in my sorry in my in my garden. This for me is very difficult because I don't have enough bamboos and space to be. Imagine that you have five five tomato plants together. This is very difficult because it takes a lot of space. So I do more of this. I have one stem, and then also because I plant a. I plant other things on the bottom of the tomato plant. So if you have this, you are creating a lot of shade. Whereas if you have this, you have some light going to the bottom. So it depends. It depends. You can try with some and some to see. This depends on the structure of your garden. If you are growing other things on the bottom, so many things. And then, yeah, I want to talk about this as well. Irrigation. So if you can see here, this stem it doesn't have suckers, but it doesn't have leaves either. Have you seen? The leaves are all here on top. And this is because um, when when these leaves on the bottom start to die, normally we cut them. We cut them, we cut them, we cut them. And this is going to help the aeration of the plant. Imagine having this, this group of leaves all over. Like the chances of these leaves getting um, some kind of infection or problem are very very high so by cutting them you improve the aeration between in this plant and between other plants so this is what we do like in the couchette we cut the and like in the aubergine and in many others in the peppers no peppers have very few leaves and i tend to leave them if they stay well and aubergines as well but the leaves of the tomato when they are in the bottom, they they tend to dry and die, so I remove them quite quickly. And this is another way of pruning. In this case, we are only pruning the leaves. Now, the end of the season. Um, tomatoes, I don't know if you know or not, but tomatoes are peren perennial plants. If you let a tomato grow, and the weather is good, they can live over the winter. In some, pi in some parts of Spain, they can live over the winter. Me, myself, my record was last year, they live until November. My tomatoes in the, in the greenhouse. So they are quite hardy. But, um, for instance, in autumn, it started to rain a, li a lot. And the tomatoes tend to burst. Because they are receiving too much water, the tomato... They cannot grow that fast, so they burst. So imagine that you are approaching. Um, uh, it is it is September. You have a lot of green tomatoes. They, they it is going to start to to rain for autumn. So what you can do is uh, pinching, topping or top pruning the upper part of the tomato, so that tomato plant is not going to grow more vertically and it's going to invest more energy on finishing the tomatoes that it has already. So you can do that. And the, But then this plant is going to be all the time throwing suckers. So you need to be on top of it and be removing the suckers as well. Otherwise, yeah, you will have another tomato plant here growing and you wouldn't have your tomatoes uh, ripening. So yeah. And I think that that's it for today. It's a lot of, it was a lot of information. That's why I didn't want to talk about anything else. But for the next session, I want to talk a little bit about Jadam, uh, DIY fertilizers and sprays. I was thinking to do the next session the 29th, because the next Saturday I, I, is the, I'm going to be away. So if you are happy, 
we can do it in the 29th. And I just wanted to show you one thing. Um, I was putting the, planting some tomatoes, tomato plants in my garden, and I saw that the soil was like this. There are some roots of plants, but these little spaghetti that you see are mycorrhizas. It is kind of, I don't know how to say, how fungi spread when they are in the soil. So that means that I have fungi and other things growing in my soil. And I was very happy because, as you, as you know, I'm trying to grow things organically, using no digging, uh, not using chemicals, or very, or very, very few. So I, I was very happy to see that I have uh, soil with fungi and other microorganisms. Makes me very happy. So I just wanted to show you. If you see something like this, don't get scared. It's good. It's very good. And that's it. Now you can shoot your questions if you want.